Mr. Johnson in uh, in Nigeria saw that uh, Nigeria was was bottom of the list. Uh, she said, um, then this is uh, encouragement to her to work harder, um, not to move up the list, um, uh, should uh, ICANN decide to publish this again at some point uh, in future. So the fact that there are several African countries down at the bottom there should be seen, I think, as an as a encouragement. Um, there's certainly a lot of potential to move up. And what we have and what ICANN can make available to you for each of those countries that's on the list is a, is a sort of a scorecard which looks at each of those um, uh, metrics individually and compares them with, uh, with, with similar countries. That's something which uh, you might want to take a look at at some point. So we started, having created this index, started doing some analysis on the back of it. Um, and I'd like to take you through some of, of that analysis here. Um, first of all, as, as one might expect, um, as um, uh, internet uh, penetration increases, uh, moving to the right on this chart, then uh, then e friction uh, goes down. Uh, that that is maybe a little a little simplistic, um, and so we wanted to look at something which was a little bit more um, valuable, especially when we're looking at uh, the economic impact. And we came to the conclusion that um, if you are able to move your country from the bot uh, from the bottom quintile, the fifth quintile, up to the top quintile, which is essentially where those two red lines are on the chart. Um, I think I have a pointer here that I can, um, if you, whoops, how do I get rid of this? Maybe I'll abandon the pointer. Um, if you move from the, 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 the bottom quintile to the top quintile um, on this chart, then essentially you're adding two and a half percentage points to your GDP, which is a very uh, significant amount, as you can imagine. And given what I was saying before about the indirect impacts of the internet, uh, the ROPO, the consumer surplus, the, 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 the impact on um, consumer to consumer purchases, uh, and much more, uh, really that economic impact is much more than the two and a half percent points that we have here. So if there's so much at stake, uh, the question is obviously how um, how can uh, can e friction be reduced, um, which leads to to the next part of the presentation, which looks at which wheels can be greased to make the internet um, a more uh, even more uh, significant contributor uh, to the country's economies. The first two things I'd like to look at is the question of wealth and the question of of, of how rural a, a country um, uh, country is. So starting with the wealth question, if you just plot those 65 countries um, against their GDP per capita, you get a scatter plot like this. And I've uh, very consciously not put country names on, on this particular chart. And you, you, you can see the first takeaway that you probably take, uh, get, get from that is that as countries become richer, um, their e-friction score uh, seems to be lower. That's maybe not entirely um, unreasonable. But I think the more important insight from this chart um, is the following. If you look at a particular level of GDP, let's take $10,000 um, uh, per capita, so in the middle of the chart, you'll see that there are some countries there at, 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 ten, at around $10,000 of GDP that have, have an e-friction score of about 40, uh, and a, a consequently sort of second quintile, uh, perhaps third quintile. But there are also countries at $10,000 uh, per capita with uh, e frictions close to 80, so down in the fifth uh, in the fifth quintile of our index. So at one particular level of, of income, there's really a, quite a wide range um, of of e friction scores, and you see that also at the for the countries at the, the right of the chart, the high income countries. You see there there are some countries with high levels of income uh, with scores of of less than 20. But you also see uh, countries with scores of, of maybe 50 or 60 or so for a very uh, a wide range uh, um, of, of e-friction scores. Uh, and so wealth on its own is not uh, the driver of destiny when it comes to uh, e-friction. So, so other things uh, are important. And what we've done here um, is, first of all, put on the country names. This is the same chart as before, but this time with the names. And we've identified these different clusters of country where it seems that, uh, that they are, um, have many things in common, that they're behaving in very similar ways. 
So if we take, for example, the top right-hand uh, part of the chart, what we call here the all-rounders, that's a set of countries which are all uh, quite wealthy, but they all essentially perform well uh, on all of the dimensions of e-friction that, that I introduced to you uh, earlier. And then moving sort of uh, south uh, westwards across the chart, you see these high-income overachievers and the middle-income overachievers. Uh, those are countries with lower levels of income than the first category, the all-rounders, uh, but where also they are performing more strongly than would it on the friction index than one would expect uh, from uh, from their levels of GDP. Looking down to the to the bottom left of the chart, uh, we have um, uh, uh, two um, segments that I'd like to talk about. First of all, uh, we have these the middle income rural countries, and then the developing rural countries. Uh, because as we looked into the analysis more closely, uh, we came to the conclusion that um, uh, wealth has some role, but also the extent to which a country is, is urban or rural uh, plays a big role as well. And the little red arrows uh, point, point to the African countries that we have on the, uh, on the index, and most of them, as, as you will uh, undoubtedly recognize, are quite strong, uh, rural, um, rurally focused, which, propose, which, which uh, implies obviously a big challenge in terms of rolling out infrastructure and getting, uh, getting consumers access uh, to the internet. And here I'd just like to um, uh, step in a slightly different direction. Um, the Boston Consulting Group, um, as a part of a separate piece of work which we've been doing with the World Economic Forum, has been looking at how to encourage, uh, the, uh, encourage investments in infrastructure um, in uh, particularly in developing countries. I don't want to go into a great deal of, of it here, but it's relevant uh, particularly for the developing rural countries. Um, and I'd just like to make two points. First of all, there are many new technologies out there, um, be it balloons or drones or whatever, um, which could enable um, uh, access particularly to those rural regions. And one of the messages from the report from the World Economic Forum was the policymakers should do all that they can to encourage such uh, uh, use of, of such new technologies. And secondly, and maybe more, more closer in, um, is to look at uh, the question of spectrum and how it is allocated. Um, this, I think, is not in the documents that you have, um, but for a wide range of countries across the world, um, we examined the amount of, of spectrum, mobile spectrum, that's available um, for, um, uh, for 2G, 3G, or 4G services. And we came to the conclusion uh, that, first of all, there is a, a, a significant lack of harmonization. Um, there is a significant potential for re-farming. Um, and where, tech, where spectrum has already been allocated, uh, it could, in many cases, um, uh, be much more uh, effectively deployed uh, than, than it is. And the, the specific message depends on the country that you're looking at. Um, but the, the, the message from this report to policymakers was to to really put a, a big emph emphasis on the availability of spectrum as one way um, of, uh, of improving access to the internet um, in, in those countries. So moving back to the, um, to the ICANN work. So we've talked about uh, the rural aspect, we've talked about the, the wealth aspect, but there are other aspects uh, which need to be addressed as well if, um, if the internet economy is, is going to function well. And the next two things I'd like to talk about are uh, essentially uh, literacy and, and ICT, ICT skills. As we looked again at the data for e-friction, um, one of the things we wanted to examine was, was how it is linked to literacy rates. What you see here on the vertical axis again is the friction score. And on the horizontal axis you have, it's a log scale, um, but it's the uh, amount of illiteracy. Um, in, uh, in, in a particular country. So literate countries, uh, highly literate countries are on the left, less literate countries um, are on the right. And you see that there is, um, maybe it's not a perfect correlation, but there is, um, a, is certainly a trend uh, that those countries with high literacy rates perform much more strongly for all the sorts of reasons that you can imagine uh, when it comes to, uh, to e-friction. And, and given that uh, uh, over 98% um, of illiterate people can be around the world can be found in those economies with high or very high levels of e-friction, um, and that over 800 million of them are so are in um, in rural areas. Uh, there is a strong argument here, I guess, to policymakers 
uh, to focus on uh, uh, reducing literacy as one way of encouraging people to participate um, in the digital economy. The next question that we looked at was, was the question of, of, of language. Um, and um, you sometimes hear that you need to speak English to be able to use the internet. Um, uh, but as we know, in, in many parts of the world, uh, uh, English uh, is, is just one of, of many hundreds of languages that are, that are being used. And what we show here um, is, is the friction score again uh, against um, a, a measure of English proficiency. And only countries are listed here where English is not the uh, main language. And again, you see a bit of a correlation. It's not perfect again. Uh, but those countries where English um, is, is, uh, is better spoken uh, have lower refriction scores uh, than those that are don't. I think, however, there are two messages, two, two messages that can be taken away from this chart. One message would be to say, um, well, people need to learn to speak English. Um, that's probably the simplistic uh, view. I think the second and more important uh, message, uh, uh, second possible intervention for policymakers, is really to focus on creating much more local language content, um, which is more accessible uh, to, to people who, who speak those hundreds of languages in, in, in many countries. Um, certainly that's true across, uh, across Africa. Um, and that, I think, is, is going to be a faster way uh, to um, uh, to, to, to getting use of the internet than, than, than forcing people to speak English. Also because creating local content is going to help create uh, jobs for people who will be, um, be creating, that, uh, creating that content. So let me just summarize what I've said so far um, and then we'll move on to the small and medium-sized companies. Uh, so one me message is that um, uh, a high share of the global population is in countries with a very uh, high level of e-friction. Um, so uh, addressing the questions of e-friction will bring um, really a very significant proportion of that offline uh, population uh, into the digital world. Um, secondly, the economic impact uh, of those top quintile countries is really very significant, two and a half percentage points higher than those in the bottom quintile, and that's a conservative estimate, I think. Uh, thirdly, um, if you looked at the, at the chart that you, you, you have in the handouts, you'll see that some countries get it right on all components of e-friction. They score well on all, uh, all dimensions, whereas most countries have a varied performance. And I think the message from that is that there's no silver bullet uh, for, for capturing the Internet's impact. Policymakers, governments um, really need to work on many different levers uh, simultaneously in order to benefit from the uh, from the internet economy in total. So I mentioned small and medium-sized enterprises um, and, and said that, that uh, in many countries around the world, probably most countries around the world, small and medium-sized uh, enterprises account for a very, very high proportion um, of the workforce um, and a significant proportion of, of GDP. In some countries it might be uh, 50 percent of GDP or 80 or 90 percent of, of the workforce and policymakers have a strong interest um, in ensuring that these small and then small and medium-sized companies uh, survive and thrive and it's just as uh, uh, we have just a couple of, of quotes a couple of examples taken from the report uh, that you'll find on BCG's or what ICANN's website from SMEs uh, which really uh, owe their existence and success uh, to ways in which they're using, um, using the internet. Um, over the past few years, BCG has done a significant amount of work uh, across the world uh, looking at how the internet uh, has helped small and medium-sized companies uh, grow their revenues. And this is just an extract of some of that data uh, for about a dozen countries, uh, including uh, obviously a couple of African countries here showing the difference in growth rates, uh, uh, and this was measured over a three-year period, uh, between those, com those companies which are extensively using the internet, those are the ones uh, in green, and those that are losing, using the internet to a much less significant extent. So using the internet extensively, it could be using, um, using social media, it could be using uh, uh, platforms uh, in, in the cloud for collaboration, um, it could be uh, a smart use of uh, of search engine optimization and many other different forms um, of internet use as well, which we categorized. And I think you will, you will agree, I hope you will agree, that irrespective of which country you look at, 
those companies which are extensively using the internet are growing uh, quite a bit more significantly than those that are not. Um, and in addition to that, uh, you will see, and that's my next chart, I think, um, you will see that, um, again, here you've got the green and the, and the orange curves corresponding to the curves before, that those companies um, which are using the internet more are selling also more broadly. They're not just selling within their neighborhood or within their city or within their local region. They're also selling much more across the whole country or indeed exporting uh, much more significantly than those co companies that are not um, using the internet as much. So the internet is helping small and medium-sized enterprises to extend their geographic reach. And that is true on the sales side, as just described. That's the left-hand side of this chart. But if you also uh, ask those companies where they are buying their um, goods from their, their, um, uh, for, their, for their supply chain, you will also discover that they are also purchasing much more globally uh, than, than, than those that are using the internet less. So essentially the internet, um, as one might expect, is helping these companies to become much more integrated components um, of, the, um, of the internet economy. And they're generating growth, and they're generating uh, jobs uh, with it. So a strong message to to policymakers here is to get um, more SMEs online. So what do SMEs complain about? How does what would SMEs like to to address in order to to reduce e-friction? And this is the, the result of the global studies. So we have this on a country basis as well, but this is the global uh, the global results. What you see here is for the four pillars of, of e-friction, which are listed on the left-hand side, um, we asked various questions uh, to these SMEs as to, to how they saw um, uh, the need to reduce uh, e-friction. And you will see that some areas are seen as particularly problematic um, and others are, are, are less, um, red being the more problematic area. And one message from this is that if you look at the top of the chart, um, which is where we have uh, uh, friction which is related to infrastructure, then um, in general, I think it's fair to say that SMEs do not see significant problems there. The, the length of the red uh, bar is, 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 is relatively short compared to, to most of the other um, uh, questions that we ask. So infrastructure, it's important, of course, uh, but it really only plays um, a, a less uh, major role when it comes to how SMEs think about um, uh, the internet. They see, the SMEs see, uh, much more significant problems in the other areas, such as um, uh, regulation uh, to support online sales, regulation to support cross-border sales, uh, questions moving down the list of, of the, the safety and security of personal data uh, online, uh, questions of uh, getting the right skills, all the questions which are obviously um, related to, to their success uh, as a business, uh, but are not related um, really in any way to the, to the extent to which there is infrastructure available um, uh, in, in the country that these, these companies are operating in. So many, many sources of friction can be addressed here uh, by, uh, by policymakers, by governments, which have got nothing to do uh, with the infrastructure that's, uh, that's out there. So coming uh, to the sort of concluding messages, um, uh, as I said, for, for each of the 65 countries that we looked at, we have this, this little metric uh, that we've got here in the middle. So all 55 indicators are shown here uh, for those countries. And, and obviously from that, you can start uh, developing uh, uh, agendas on what needs to be changed. Um, I think one of the key messages, uh, or there are two key messages from this. First of all, um, there are many countries around the world where the metrics are not available. Um, there's an old saying, what gets measured gets done. Um, so if, 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 uh, if you're not sure where you're starting from, uh, maybe, maybe the best thing to do is start getting some data on those metrics to understand how e-friction is in, in, in your particular country. And secondly, um, the message from this is that um, given the wide range of sources of friction, it's not going to be uh, one action or two actions. There's going to be a whole set of different actions uh, involving many different stakeholders uh, that is going to be needed in order to reduce the level um, of e-friction. And that multi-stakeholder approach, um, which is obviously very uh, much at the, the, the heart of, 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 of what the Internet is about, um, is really going to, uh, to be key in making the changes necessary to grow the, the Internet economy. 
and the prize is actually quite significant. Um, uh, just doing some simple simple maths, um, if Africa as a continent uh, were to achieve an internet economy at the level of 5% of GDP, which is roughly where the G20 will be next year, uh, that adds around $100 billion to the continent's economy with many indirect benefits as well. Getting the next 500, billion, 500 million people online in Africa will create something of the order of $200 billion of consumer surplus based on the, the analysis that, um, that I introduced earlier on. Maybe around 20 million jobs uh, for each percentage point increase in the size of the internet economy is a very significant job creation uh, potential and then social benefits and trade as well as, as uh, important um, uh, uh, benefits from, 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 the, from a growing internet economy. So if I were to put together a broad agenda for policymakers based on, uh, on this work, um, uh, obviously there are many points that need to be addressed. But I think these, these six uh, messages would be, would be the key ones. First of all, um, do not see your country's wealth as its destiny. As I, as I showed, um, uh, uh, GDP is one indicator of, of e-friction, uh, but there are many others, uh, many other drivers as well. Um, and irrespective of how, uh, of, of, of what your level of GDP is, uh, there are many levers to address, uh, to reduce e-friction. Secondly, infrastructure obviously does play a role. It's 50% of the weight of the e-friction index. And achieving affordable infrastructure in low population density areas in particular uh, requires new technologies, new business models, um, uh, experimentation in policy, uh, rather than just blindly following what has been done uh, elsewhere. Thirdly, literacy, basic literacy, English language skills, ICT skills all help, uh, but also just taking that language point, local relevance, uh, local language content, local content uh, drives usage as well. There are many, many examples of that. It requires the encouragement of local uh, ecosystems, e-government services, e-health services, education, and so on and so forth. That local relevance is going to be increasingly important, I believe, um, as, as we push the internet even further. Um, fifthly, getting companies uh, online, small and medium-sized enterprises, as I've said, uh, grow faster if they're using the internet more. Um, there's a strong message there, uh, business creation and, and job creation. And last but not least, um, uh, encourage what I've called here joined-up policymaking, uh, driving for multi-stakeholder multi involvement from across the whole ecosystem, but also learnings from relevant peers, um, uh, not necessarily peers uh, from, from with the, your neighbours, uh, but peers from, from other countries um, further afield might be the right ones to, um, uh, to consider as you're looking uh, to define your own agendas for, for the internet economy. So the prize is high, the prize is big, um, and I encourage you all to, to examine the report. Um, I have a slide here. Uh, the, there's, there's the original report which came out a year ago and then an update uh, which came out in April of this year. Uh, you can find uh, these on these uh, on, on, on the on the BCG or the ICANN websites, and I'll leave that chart up um, as uh, I stop and pause for questions. Yeah. Just do some okay. Introduction. So before any question, there will be Pierre giving some brief. And then we'll take the questions. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dean, for this um, uh, remarkable, you know, report. And uh, uh, again, good morning to everyone. Um, of course, we are just going to um, get your feedback on this report. And uh, let me quickly um, present a. Uh, kind of background uh, to this report that uh, I can commission in 2013 and the idea was to actually better understand um, how uh, various factors inhibit uh, online interaction and exchanges and thereby constrain the um, economic activity uh, and the result is this report that we are having here um, so briefly, there is something I just also wanted to highlight, which is um, um, the World Economic Forum, you know, started yesterday in Cape Town. And um, of course, the theme here is the 
uh, reimagining Africans uh, future and uh, you also see that um, digital economy uh, is for me a kind of pillar of, of this uh, uh, imagination you know Africa's uh, uh, future I think it's quite important and uh, we also have to thank the BCG reports you know for this uh, coming uh, up with this um, notion of efficient and also uh, which really lay the basis for uh, what you might call kind of strategic you know policies um, for, for countries and uh, and as Dean pointed out when we actually the report was presented you know um, uh, the word, uh, in Nigeria in Abuja uh, yeah the minister has a very good reaction was saying well uh, maybe this report whatever it's saying here is not exactly what Nigeria looks like and thereby she wanted to commission her own study for her country uh, later on at uh, Transform Africa in Rwanda uh, we also you know did this sort of presentation of the report and uh, most of the ministers there and the head of state were saying well that's quite interesting but how come our country you know uh, is not represented there how come we do have our own fi uh, figures of course that shows that there is something to do about in the data collection uh, in the in our countries and um, certainly this is something this is one of the lessons to, to be drawn from Africa I don't want to um, just keep on you know talking because now is your your time for your feedback uh, question and answers um, we do have different people different countries here let's have a clear-cut idea on what you really think about this report um, I hope you are able to get a few copies outside there um, but we also have links to this report so that you can study this and then you'll be in touch with I can also with uh, the BCG uh, uh, um, uh, team as well. So, we would like to take the opportunity to provide any feedback. That would be wonderful. Well, we also have our board members here from ICAM, and they decided that we should launch this. Uh, Mike is around. Yeah, if Mike have maybe one minute or whatever feedback on this, that would be fine. And then we open up to uh, your to the discussions. So, thank you. Thanks, Pierre. I hope everybody else is as fascinated by this initiative as I am. And I would really encourage you, even those of you who, who don't generally read consulting house papers, to actually take the time to look at this one because it's a very different picture of the internet in Africa compared to what we're used to from some of the other guys. In particular, it celebrates the successes. And it really acknowledges the successes, but it hones in very clearly on where the challenges are. And I've had the opportunity of engaging with local politicians on this issue. And they were very pleased to see a far more honest and quite a positive approach to the future of the internet in Africa and also identifying those areas where work is needed because I think we all acknowledge that work is needed and that's the responsibility of all of us government, private, academic, technical communities all have a role to play in actually moving that forward Um, we'll take the free question from the floor and then of course if you have any more question I will invite you to meet with Pierre, with Mike Cyber, with Dean, with David Dean during the coffee breaks because we are we have our AGMM after there is a scripts team um, debrief so I'll take the few questions please state your name and the question to whom you're asking the question thank you Okay, so I'll take the first question then, which is in fact three short questions, may not be apparently targeted completely to Africa, but nevertheless have a relevance to. The one is definition of repo. Repo is the, the second always for offline. So when I buy something at Amazon.com, for example, or Alibaba or something like that, is it part of a repo or, 
or not. But that's a technicality. The, my question more is, look at Europe, in fact, in your chart, a positive economic impact of low e friction, and compare different countries in Europe, and on the, on the left-hand side, the left uh, axis shows the so-called person digital economy as a percentage of GDP. And it put United Kingdom uh, close to 8%, whereas you have the rest of Europe more around 5% or less. And I was wondering whether you can see in the dynamic of the economy evidence of this effect, which we could have in the, could refine a little bit, analysis a little bit. And third, something to do with the rural area. Uh, you may know some countries like uh, Kenya have uh, introduced system of payment like MPESA and so on, which will change the financial structure in those places. And do you have any reason, or base of your analysis, to see that it will have a mega impact on their economy? Okay, thanks, thanks for your questions. Uh, very briefly, uh, on ROPO, um, on uh, your question of Amazon, that would not be part of ROPO uh, because uh, normally with, with, uh, with Amazon you would also do the, the payment transaction online um, with your credit card or with PayPal or something similar. Um, but if you were to go to a, a, a website and just, uh, maybe that's Amazon as well, just to compare prices, and then you would go to a store and physically buy the product there, then that would be uh, that would be a ROPO uh, transaction. Secondly, on Europe, uh, you're right to point out that there are very big differences uh, across uh, across the continent. Um, and that's also been supported by other work that's that's been uh, that's been done. Um, there are some economies, uh, most notably the Scandinavian, the Nordic economies, Estonia, uh, uh, Britain, um, that that uh, have much more highly developed uh, um, uh, e-commerce um, uh, industries uh, than than countries in particularly in the south uh, and the east of of Europe. Um, uh, E-government, for example, is very strong in in Denmark or in Estonia. Uh, but in, in many southern European countries, it's less so, and that accounts for that very big difference uh, in in, uh, in eGDP across the continent. And on your MPESA point, uh, we didn't look specifically at the, the economic impact of that, but I think MPESA is a fantastic example um, of something where uh, a country has taken an approach um, which essentially leapfrogs uh, existing systems, uh, existing uh, industry structures. I think um, uh, I think I made the, the point that as as Africa looks to develop its infrastructure, develop its business systems in order to reap benefits uh, from the internet, um, uh, you shouldn't I think be looking at policies which have worked uh, elsewhere. You should be working on policies which work in the countries that you're you're in. I think Mpesa is an example of, of essentially breaking the mold um, of um, of a business system. Uh, with uh, significant uh, consumer and, and, and industry benefits. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Um, I, sometimes when we read reports, we don't quite get it, but when we hear a presentation, it reinforces it. So from that point of view, I really appreciate the outreach you've done uh, to us. Um, something struck me. Uh, and I want to ask a question around it, which is the e-friction and spectrum. Right. Now, my question here is, have you had opportunity to study, because of the community we are in, to study e-friction and normal resources, or e-friction and names? Because perhaps they, they, they may have similar characteristics. Maybe it's finiteness is an issue, maybe it's not. So I was just wondering, the same way that you've studied the spectrum, uh, have you had chance to look at the resources that enable the internet and, you know, the state of them and its impact on e-friction? Thank you. Uh, thanks for your uh, kind comments on, on the report. We, um, we started with a very long list of, of potential uh, sources of e-friction. I think it was, it was uh, probably a hundred or so, um, and included all sorts of things related to, or including related to, to domain names and many other factors as well. 
Um, the uh, final list was the 55 that we, we showed here. Uh, and that's not because uh, there are other sources of friction uh, which are not important, but we were trying to get a good balance between um, uh, the uh, having a, 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 a relatively large number of metrics, but also metrics which were available on a reliable basis across many countries across the world. Um, we could have made the choice of including more metrics, but then we'd have had fewer countries. Um, or we, uh, we could have had fewer metrics and had more countries, and this was sort of the compromise uh, that, we, that we set. Um, we also very clearly said, um, with, together with ICANN, when we began this work, that this, is, this report is not uh, supposed to be the definitive report on, on internet friction. Um, there's probably no such thing, because as things evolve, new sources of friction will, will emerge as, as, as other forms of friction uh, um, are removed. And so this is this is a hopefully a contribution to the debate about e-friction and how we can get more people online around the world. Um, but it's certainly not the definitive answer. It will be um, interesting at some point to go back and look uh, at additional sources of friction um, and and how that affects affects the internet economy. Thank you, David. Unfortunately, I will have to close this panel and I will invite you to have a chat with all these panelists during the coffee break. To continue, I would like to call the Crips team to give the updates and to come on stage so that we can keep with the agenda. Thank you. Thank you very much. Big applause. Thank <laughs> you.